How Jaden Daniel saved the commanders? Hey, what? From 1999 to 2023, the Washington Redskins would find almost no major success making a playoff appearance only six times and winning only two playoff games over the span of 24 years. So he's right. I've been a Commanders fan since well, since I was born and I'm 28 years. Um, and I was born like in the in the Rockville area. You guys see what I'm trying to say? And yeah, bro, the Redskins have not won anything, <laughs> anything since I've been basically alive. Or if I was alive, I was too young to notice, right? So this year, it's just been, it's been an, an insane year. But what do you guys think? Put it in the comment section. Washington was hopeless. Mm. Along the way, the Redskins would find gems, whether it be players on the offense or defense or someone on the coaching staff. But talent alone wouldn't be enough to save this franchise because there was always one person impeding any bit of success. Of course, I'm talking about the owner of the franchise. Dan Snyder was really great at ruining this football team. And th and I would have to say, since the ownership of Dan Snyder, I heard the workplace was toxic. I don't know if that is true. I heard a lot of stuff happen where he hurt the team a lot and people didn't want to stay there for very long so they left the team there was a couple of people who stayed but like it's completely different now new owner new ownership it's less toxic a lot of people want to stay um and i feel like they were really bad at recruiting players like they would have very good defense at sometimes and then a really bad offense or really good offense at sometimes and really bad defense and they could never keep a quarterback you see what i'm saying but yeah, that's I don't know, bro. It's just it's just been it's been a down journey since he's been owner, but he's not owner anymore. So I'm happy. I mean, he is regarded as one of the worst, maybe the worst owner in NFL history for a reason. Mm. Fortunately, after more than two decades, his reign of terror would come to an end in 2023 after leading the now commanders to a 4 and 13 record in his final year. And after a lot of allegations, mm. Dan Snyder was essentially forced to step down and sell the team. This is the greatest day, aside from the 91 greatest NFL team ever, the city gets its team back. So I will have to say this, that man is right. This dude, we get our, we get our like team back. And like with the accusations, I told you the NFL does not like that type of stuff. They will make, they will force you to sell. If you have a whole bunch of accusations and they're like, Hey bro, you're bringing down the franchise. You're about to get exposed. We do not want that marketing or that coverage of the media covering you and bringing down the nfl because if the nfl has a strict thing they want to be basically family friendly they want people to believe in the nfl and they do not want any bad press right that's just how the nfl works that's how any corporate business is you see what i'm saying you don't want that bad press you don't want negative press around you they're one of the actually the isn't one of the private organizations in this in the u.s and it's one of the most i'll say pro profitable or one of the most biggest with the like the biggest um market in the whole US. I feel like football isn't famous everywhere. You see what I'm saying? All over the world, but in the US it is huge. It is huge. This is so great. But he would leave the commanders one final thing, mm. one final farewell gift. The number two overall pick, aka Well, you already know his name. Let's go. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels, quarterback, LSU. In 1997, Jack Ken Cook, the then owner of the Washington Redskins, would pass away. Mm. In his tenure as the owner, the Redskins would win three Super Bowls in the span of nine years. Wow. Under Jack's ownership, Washington was really good. I wasn't even born, bro. I was born in 96. So, like, this is four years before I was born. I missed the golden era, bro. I missed it. I missed it. And in May of 1999, it would be official. The Washington Redskins were now under new management, marking the beginning of their worst era mm. in franchise history. Surprisingly, Snyder's first year as a Redskins owner would be a good one. The team led by quarterback Brad Johnson and head coach Morv Turner would end the season with a 10-6 record, securing mm. first place in the division and making the playoffs. The Redskins would overcome the Lions in a wildcard, 
but would ultimately fall short to the Buccaneers in the divisional round. Mm. This season was by all means a good season, and in 2000, Dan Snyder wanted to aim higher. Having just absolutely fleeced the Saints in the 1999 draft, the Redskins had an abundance of resources. They had three first round picks, which wow. they would use to select future three-time Pro Bowler in linebacker LeVar Arrington and six-time Pro Bowler in offensive tackle Chris Samuels. Let's Snyder go. had also made a big push to sign a lot of veteran players in free agency, namely the addition of primetime himself. And in just one offseason, the Redskins now had Super Bowl expectations. So this is the thing, right? I heard Snyder was like really good back in the day, like when he first started. But like, I feel like when the team, the more the team, the more he owned the team, the worse he got. I don't understand if it was his attitude. I don't know if it was um, the way he just didn't like certain players. So he dropped them. Like there had to have been something that created this negative, like this negative team, bro, for so many years. But this season would not pan out as expected. Mm. After starting the season 7-6, and six, Dan Snyder would actually fire his head coach, wow. Norv Turner, mid-season. A very, very impulsive decision. Snyder always had a win-out mentality. He always wanted to find success immediately, leading him to make some very poor choices. And that's not the, that's the worst thing to do. It, sometimes it takes years to develop players. Sometimes it takes years to create that super team. You cannot just create it in one year. That is a very bad way of thinking like we are this is not the olympics where you have all these players relied on you you have to take chances on certain players and you have to develop other other things it's kind of bad that they he fired the head coach i would have gave him a couple of years and if he didn't do it okay but if you just do it after one or two years of ownership that's bad funny enough the redskins under snyder would find anything but success the next mm. two decades would be filled with mediocrity for the Redskins franchise. 2005 would be the last little bit of success that Washington would ever find, as this would be the last time they would ever win a playoff game. In 2015, the Redskins would finish 9-7, marking the last time that the Washington Redskins would achieve a positive record. This team was in purgatory. Mm. Fortunately, 1,200 miles south in San Bernardino, their future savior would begin his football career. Okay. Jaden Daniels, born in San Bernardino, would begin attending Cajon High School in 2015, where mm. he would make the varsity team and be named a starting quarterback as a freshman. It wouldn't take long for Daniels to showcase his talent. He would end his freshman season throwing for almost 2,700 yards, had 35 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. For wow. anyone, this was a really good season, but this would pale in comparison to what Jaden Daniels would do soon after. And the thing, the thing about Jason or Jaden Daniels is, bro, this man is fast. When I say this man is fast, this man is crazy fast, bro. This man outrun everybody, bro. It's not even close. This man could literally be a wide receiver. That's how fast this man is. I'm not even like, bro. If you ever seen this man run, and and bro, he literally. He literally has bruised ribs, bro, and he still played, right? And we still won that game by that Hail Mary. I'm not going to lie. By the Hail Mary, that was crazy, right? But I'm just saying that the next, if we keep Jaden Daniels healthy, bro, we're going to be able to dominate the NFL, bro. It's not even going to be close. I feel like we have a we have a Super Bowl in the next four years, but we have to keep him healthy. We cannot have him. We can't have him bruise his ribs. We cannot have him like roll over his ankles. We need to keep him healthy in the NFL. That is very hard. We need a good protection around Dayton Daniels. We need a very good offensive line, in my opinion. And we already kind of have it, but still. By his senior season, he was thrown for over 4,500 yards, Ooh. had 76 touchdowns, and only four interceptions. Daniels had ended his high school career with over 14,000 passing yards and over 200 touchdowns. Wow. Jaden Daniels was unheard of, and it's no surprise he was easily seen as the best dual threat quarterback in the class of 2019. And it also shouldn't be surprising that every school in the nation wanted him. But instead of going to a big name school like Ohio State or Alabama, Jaden Daniels decided to commit to. Arizona State. Okay. Hmm. The Arizona State Sun Devils, led by former NFL head coach Herm Edwards, weren't exactly known for being a powerhouse or anything special for that matter, but they were offering Jaden Daniels a starting quarterback position. So in just his freshman year of college, Daniels immediately got wow. playing time. His first season in college would turn out to be a good one, leading the Sun Devils to an 8-5 record, which included an upset win over the number 6 ranked Oregon Ducks. Jaden Daniels ended his freshman season with under 3,000 passing yards and 20 touchdowns. 
2019 was an incredible season for Daniels considering it was just his first year. However, I, 2020 mm. was looking even more promising. So the thing is with this this season, bro, a bigger team is going to pick him up. Right? Dude, this man is dominating, dominating the bigger teams. I didn't know that if you were a freshman that you could be a starter. I didn't know that actually. That is until the pandemic hit and mm. completely derailed everything. The lockdown led to football season being bare bones as Arizona State only played four games. Now, okay. 2021 was the season where Jaden Daniels was actually supposed to take that next leap forward. But instead of improving, Jaden Daniels actually had his worst season of his entire football career, throwing okay. for under 2,400 passing yards, 10 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. He also led the Sun Devils to an 8-5 record. Well, huh. technically 0-5 because the school ended up vacating all their wins due to some NCAA violations. What? The school that year was all over the place. And rightfully so, Jaden Daniels didn't want to stun his career because of them. So in February of 2022, Jaden Daniels would enter the transfer portal. A move that his teammates did not approve of. So this is the thing, right? I feel like he saw that it was a negative energy he saw that it was a very negative place to work at negative attitude and and he wanted to stay out of that you see what i'm saying you want to have a positive workplace you want to have people that support you you want to have somewhere where you feel comfortable because if you don't feel comfortable you're not going to play at your best right you see what i'm saying you're always looking over your back i understand why he did it but a lot of people will disagree with me you see especially arizona fans Having just wow. left his team behind, Jaden Daniels was looking for a school that would allow him to maximize his potential. The school that he ended up choosing was all the way in the deep south in Baton Rouge, Louisiana State University. At LSU, Daniels would be surrounded with talent. He was being protected by one of the best O-lines in the country and would be throwing some elite neighbors, probably the best rookie receiver in the NFL this year. So that is true, right? And I feel like LSU is actually a huge school, right? Huge school. One of the best schools in the country. So, of course, going from an okay school like Arizona to LSU is a big jump, right? The players, everything. I feel like LSU has better recruitment than Arizona. I'm not going to lie. I'm not an Arizona fan. Put in the comment section if I'm wrong. But if he's if he's basically playing with future NFL stars, he's, he's going to look crazy. You see what I'm saying? But let's keep watching. And at Brian Thomas Jr. at the head coach position, Brian Kelly would be leading the team. Jaden Daniels would easily win a starting quarterback position. And 2022 would end up being a pretty good season for Jaden Daniels, mm. leading LSU to a 93 record and ending with almost 3,000 passing yards, 28 touchdowns, wow. and 900 rushing yards. No doubt a really good season. Most college quarterbacks would be more than happy to put up these numbers, and most college quarterbacks would declare for the draft now while their stock was still high. But Daniels wanted one more year, one more season to prove that he could be even better. And so I feel like this was a good, um, good thing for Daniels because I feel like if he would have went in the into the draft this year, it would have been harder for him to develop because one you're still newer, right? You need to develop as a football player, right? And especially in college, because when you go to the big leagues, there is no second chances, bro. You're literally like, these these guys are professionals. They will take you down, bro. You see what I'm saying? Especially the defense, bro. So like, I feel like if you give more time for quarterbacks to basically develop, to get better, when they, when they go into the NFL, I feel like they would be a lot better. Unless they're like freaking Peyton Manning or... um how to explain it like there's a whole bunch of other quarterbacks right but i do agree with the moves he made put in the comment section if you guys agree with me and in 2023 he did just that mm. that's what he does to the end Ooh. zone for lacy got it touchdown mm. quarterback draw the seas part there goes Woo. daniels again He's wow looking for the end zone. touchdown dang looks again daniel stands tall oh, right. going deep end zone touchdown oh. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, football is so much different. It is so much different than than the NFL. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like there's like more plays going happening. Like it's like actually a lot faster. What do you guys think? Put in the comments section. Jaden Daniels. Wow. 
ending the season with over 3,800 passing yards on a 72 Woo! completion percentage, 1,100 rushing yards, and 50 total touchdowns. Jaden Daniels was the best college football player in 2023, mm. evident by the fact that, well, he won the Heisman Trophy. Having just played the best season of his career, Jaden Daniels would declare for the 2024 drafts. However, he did have some problems that teams accounted for. So I will have to say this before we go into the next subject. I'm glad, right? He won the Heisman. He developed more as a quarterback. He was able to get his full stride. It took him, it took him like, what, three years? Three or four years, right? So now we got to think about when he's on the commanders, it's going to take him a couple years to be that crazy quarterback. He is crazy now, but I'm saying like, like I think he's going to be, he's going to be so good, bro. Like I think we're going to win Super Bowls. I think we're going to make the playoffs every year. I think we're going to be on the top of the division, right? But he needs, basically, he needs to basically start, he needs to grow, right? He's so young as a rookie quarterback. I feel like he is so much on his plate right now and he's playing amazing, Right, but when he de when he's developed, when he's found his stride, I feel like we'll be the be best NF NFL team. I'm I'm not gonna lie. A lot of people, you might doubt me. You might doubt me. You might say, "Yo, Vortex, you crazy? Wait, what are you talking about, Vortex? Like what? Huh?" And I'm gonna be like, "Bro, that's how much faith I got." Because, dude, every Sunday, bro, I watch the game, bro. I don't care if we win or lose it. I watch the game, and I'm like, damn, bro. I have not felt like this since I was born, bro. But I don't know. Put in the comment section if you guys agree. Mainly, it was the fact that he was just really skinny. Listed mm -hmm. at 6'4 and 210 pounds, Jaden Daniels is one of the lightest quarterbacks in the NFL. He but he's also one of the most explosive. A big part of Daniels game has always been that he's very mobile. And that wasn't going to change in the NFL. The Washington Commanders who were just recently freed from the shackles of Dan Snyder and ended the season 4-12. and We're looking for a quarterback in the 2024 draft. And with their number two overall pick, they seemingly found their guy. Wow. And here we go, Daryl Johnston. The first moments of Jaden Daniels' NFL career in the regular season. In his NFL debut, Daniels would face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He would end up throwing for 184 yards, rushing for 88 yards, and finding the end zone twice. But it was week three against the Bengals that would officially put him on the map. Mm. Oh, this was crazy. Oh my. Touchdown! Oh my gosh. Daniels would find the end zone three times and would throw for 250 yards on a 91 completion percentage. And he would do this every single week, scoring touchdown after touchdown. Bro, this man had a 91 percentage of completion, bro. Just imagine that. 91%. What other quarterback have you heard of having that pass percentage? Put in the comment section. Because no one, bro. No one. That's why I'm so confident in this team, bro. Dude, he's smashing records. His first year. And he's not even developed yet. You see what I'm saying? I swear, bro. I'm about to get so mad if he gets injured, bro. Bro, I'll... Oh, ooh. I can deal with bruised ribs, but if he, like, breaks a leg or he gets hit badly or, he, or something happens, bro... We're screwed, but like, like, come on, guys. 91%? 91%. Come on. And now here we are. Comes down to that. one last play. Oh, this was crazy. And it's going to be, here comes the Hail Mary oh with the game on the line. And the ball is caught. Caught. It's a miracle. It's Noah Brown. Oh, my goodness. Wow. This town is going crazy. The Commanders, a team that haven't experienced any success in a very long time, are now looking like one of the best up-and-coming teams in the NFL. Head coach Dan Quinn and the front office have put together a good football team. With the Commanders starting off strong in 2024 and Jaden Daniels leading not just a very strong Rookie of the Year campaign, but also a case for MVP, breaking records and putting up historical numbers, and just simply having fun, Washington finally has hope. So, I'm not going to lie, right? But when I saw that play, bro, I I was like, there's no way. There's no way. We lost, right? I was like, we lost, bro. And when he caught that ball, bro, I just got goosebumps. 
goosebumps, bro. Like all over my, like you can even tell right now, bro. I don't know if you can tell by the camera, but I was like, we really caught that. We really kept that win, right? Imagine you're the Bears. You know that you had it in the bag, bro. There's one play left. They're going to do a Hail Mary. 99% of the time, uh, we the, the Bears got it, right? But it's just something about Jaden Daniels, right? There's something special about him that, like, I don't know, bro. It's just, it just creates that magic, bro. It really does. It really does. But, yo, I'm going to say shout out to Commander. Shout out to Jaden Daniels. I'm a huge fan. I had to react to this, guys. I saw this. I know it's a little different than what we usually react to. <laughs> Hopefully, the NFL don't copyright strike me or this creator, please. But I'm going to say this is going to be the end of the video. If you guys have not have sub sub the key bin, turn on your notifications. Like the video, right? Give him a like. This man is amazing. I'm going to say one more time. Shout out to key bin. Dude, you're doing amazing things. I had to react to this, bro. I'm a huge Commanders fan, and I love your videos, bro. Shout out to you. But if you guys, please sh please follow Keep it Before You Follow Me. That is my motto. If you, but if you guys like, please like, subscribe, turn on notifications for me as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Peace.